SpaceX is gearing up for Starship Flight 8, a critical test flight that aims to push the vehicle closer to full reusability. After months of upgrades and rigorous testing, SpaceX has addressed the issues from Flight 7 and is ready to put its latest design improvements to the test. With a launch just hours away, let's break down what's new, what to expect, and why this mission is a major step forward for Starship. After weeks of preparation, inspections, testing, and system checkouts, Ship 34, the upper stage assigned to Flight 8, departed the production site early Sunday morning and made its way to the launch site. Upon arrival, the launch tower's robotic arms carefully lifted the vehicle and stacked it atop Booster 15, which had been moved to the pad a week prior. In recent days, Booster 15 underwent a series of final system checks and modifications in preparation for Flight 8. One of the most notable changes was the removal of the hot stage ring, allowing engineers to inspect and repair critical components housed within the forward dome. This section contains essential systems, including the grid fin actuators, avionics, and propellant plumbing. Additionally, the booster was outfitted with flight termination system charges, which are designed to destroy the rocket in flight by triggering an explosion in the event of an anomaly. Ship 34 had already received its FTS charges while still inside Megabay 2 before rollout. SpaceX received the Flight 8 launch license from the FAA on February 26, allowing the next Starship test flight to proceed. The FAA stated that while the Flight 7 mishap investigation remains open, a comprehensive review confirmed that SpaceX has met all necessary safety, environmental, and licensing requirements for Flight 8. With the full stack now assembled, the launch license secured, and lift off just hours away. The final tasks include conducting pre flight checks on both the vehicle and the ground systems to ensure all systems are ready for launch. Now, let's break down the mission objectives and the critical milestones SpaceX is targeting in this test flight. Flight 8 marks the second launch of SpaceX's next generation Starship Block 2 prototype, consisting of Booster 15 and Ship 34, lifting off from Launch Pad A at Starbase. Once the vehicle reaches its target altitude, stage separation occurs, allowing the upper stage to continue toward its mission objectives. Meanwhile, Booster 15 will execute a boost backburn and mirror the Flight 7 re-entry profile to redirect itself towards Starbase for a catch attempt using the launch tower arms. To enhance reliability, Booster 15 has been equipped with significant avionics upgrades, including a more advanced flight computer, improved power and network distribution, and integrated smart batteries. Additionally, SpaceX has introduced several hardware and software modifications to the launch tower's catch system to prevent catch abort scenarios. The arms now feature upgraded protections for their sensors and improved radar systems to enhance the accuracy of the catch. In addition to these upgrades, SpaceX conducted multiple tests of the chopstick arms in the previous days, performing booster catch simulations to ensure the system could accurately track engage, and support the booster during landing, minimizing the risk of mechanical failures or misalignments. However, if conditions are not ideal, the catch attempt will be aborted, and the booster will default to a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Following stage separation, Ship 34 will continue on a suborbital trajectory, executing a series of critical in-flight tests. One of the most significant demonstrations will be the reignition of a single Raptor engine in space. This test will provide valuable data on engine startup reliability in microgravity, combustion stability, and operational flexibility, all of which are crucial for long-duration deep space missions. While in space, Ship 34 will perform Starship's first payload deployment test by releasing four Starlink simulators. These simulators, which replicate the size and weight of next-generation Starlink satellites, were loaded into the ship's payload bay prior to its rollout to the launch pad. This marks a significant milestone in validating Starship's payload deployment capabilities, setting the stage for future missions involving Starlink Gen 3 satellites. Following a suborbital trajectory, Ship 34 will aim for a controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean, concluding its journey with valuable data on vehicle performance, reusability, and mission capabilities. This Starlink simulators deployed will also follow a similar path, re-entering Earth's atmosphere over the Indian Ocean and most likely burning up before reaching the ocean surface. One of the mission's key experiments focuses on testing Ship 33's re-entry under extreme conditions. The re-entry profile has been intentionally modified to stress the structural limits of the Block 2 vehicle's newly designed flaps at the point of maximum dynamic pressure. This will help engineers gather critical data on the durability and performance of the vehicle's aerodynamic surfaces under intense stress. 
Non-structural catch-fitting prototypes have been installed on the ship's sides to evaluate their thermal resilience during re-entry. Future missions will see Starship return for a direct catch by the launch tower instead of an ocean splashdown. This requires structural fittings that can withstand both re-entry forces and catch loads. Data collected from Flight 8 will be crucial in refining the design of the ship's catch mechanism for future missions. According to a recent FCC filing, SpaceX seems to attempt the first-ever ship catch as early as Flight 9, currently targeted for no earlier than March 14. However, the viability of this plan will largely depend on the success of Flight 8 and the performance of its landing systems. Ship 34 is also equipped with the latest generation of heat tiles, designed with a backup layer for added thermal protection. Interestingly, a significant number of tiles were deliberately removed from the ship before the flight to stress test its most vulnerable areas under re-entry conditions. Furthermore, a section of the heat shield tile line has been modified with a smoothed and tapered edge to mitigate hot spots identified during previous missions. In addition, multiple metallic tile options are being tested, including one with active cooling, to explore alternatives for thermal protection during re-entry. Traditional heat shields primarily rely on passive cooling, where the tile material with high heat resistance absorbs heat and then radiates away without any active intervention. With active cooling, a liquid or gas coolant is pumped through channels within the tiles or adjacent to them. This coolant absorbs the heat, reducing the temperature at the surface or within the structure. Although it adds complexity to the tile design, active cooling can provide more consistent and effective thermal management, potentially allowing for safer re-entry at higher speeds or from longer missions where the heat load is significant. To achieve all its Flight 8 mission objectives smoothly, SpaceX has swiftly identified and rectified the engineering flaws that caused the Flight 7 anomaly. Let's take a closer look at these fixes. This SpaceX Flight 7 investigation traced the failure to unexpectedly strong harmonic oscillations in the upper stage engine feed lines, which were significantly more intense than those observed in ground tests. These extreme vibrations caused structural fatigue leading to a rupture in the fuel lines and subsequent propellant leaks into the unpressurized attic section. The venting system couldn't expel the leaked fuel quickly enough, allowing it to ignite and cause sustained fires that severely compromised engine operation. With the engines failing, the ship was unable to maintain controlled flight and re-entered the atmosphere prematurely. As the vehicle descended uncontrollably, the flight termination system activated as expected, resulting in its destruction upon re-entry. To prevent a similar failure in Flight 8, SpaceX has made several critical design changes to Ship 34. The propellant feed lines have been reinforced to withstand harmonic stresses. Fuel temperature management has been optimized to reduce fluctuations that contribute to structural oscillations. And engine thrust profiles have been adjusted to minimize resonance effects and excessive vibrations. Also, to prevent flammable gas buildup, SpaceX has introduced enhanced venting and a gaseous nitrogen purge system in the attic section. To validate these fixes, SpaceX conducted a 60-second extended static fire test on Ship 34 last month, simulating the harmonic conditions from Flight 7 while testing different thrust levels and hardware adjustments. Whether these improvements fully resolve the issue remains to be seen, but Flight 8 will be a crucial test. Regardless of the outcome, the data gathered will drive further refinements, bringing Starship closer to operational reliability in future missions. Now. Let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. On February 26, the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket successfully launched Intuitive Machine's second Nova Sea lunar lander, Athena, towards the moon. This mission is part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLPS, program, which aims to send small robotic landers and rovers to the moon to support lunar exploration and resource utilization. Also, Athena marks Intuitive Machine's second lunar mission, after a disuse, which tipped over upon landing in February 2024, limiting surface operations. Athena separated from Falcon 9's upper stage 45 minutes after liftoff, and then performed a translunar injection to set its trajectory toward the moon. It will enter lunar orbit on March 3rd, and perform a series of engine burns and course corrections to lower its altitude, ensuring a controlled touchdown on March 6 at Mons Mouton a high plateau near the lunar south pole, and a key region for potential water ice deposits. Athena, a six-legged lander standing approximately 4 meters tall and weighing 1,900 kilograms, carries several scientific instruments and payloads. The primary payload, NASA's Prime-1, includes the Trident Grill and M-Solo mass spectrometer to analyze subsurface materials for volatile compounds, particularly water ice. This marks the first in-sea-to-resource utilization demonstration on the Moon. 
Additionally, the lander will deploy two lunar rovers developed by private aerospace companies. Lunar Outpost's Mobile Autonomous Prospecting Platform, or MAP rover, is a 10 kg rover capable of exploring the lunar surface at speeds of up to 10 cm per second. It carries scientific instruments for regolith analysis and resource prospecting. MAP will also deploy a Stroant, a miniature rover roughly the size of a matchbox, which will conduct contactless temperature measurements while mounted on MAP's roof. Diamond Company Limited's Yoki Rover, another compact robotic vehicle, will focus on testing lunar mobility technologies, helping refine rover operations in the moon's harsh environment. A separate robotic hopper named Micronova will be deployed from Athena using a rail system to slide off and begin its operations. Equipped with a monopropellant engine, it will hop across the surface to study permanently shadowed regions near Marston Crater, searching for hydrogen in the regolith, an essential step in confirming water ice. The mission also includes Nokia's communications payload, a network in a box, designed to establish a 4G network on the surface, connecting the lander, rovers, and hopper, providing higher bandwidth than traditional systems, and supporting future interlinked lunar bases. Athena's operations are expected to last approximately two weeks, or one lunar day, after which the lander will cease functioning due to the lack of sunlight to power its solar panels. Alongside Athena, Falcon 9 carried three secondary payloads with distinct objectives. One of these, NASA's Lunar Trailblazer, is a small lunar orbiter designed to map mineral distribution and water on the moon's surface. However, NASA lost contact with the spacecraft on February 27, about 12 hours after launch, jeopardizing its two-year mission. The second rideshare payload, Astroforge's Odin spacecraft, is a 100-kg satellite intended for asteroid prospecting. It was designed to perform a flyby of near-Earth asteroid 2022 OB5 and analyze its metallic composition for potential future mining. While initial post-launch communication issues raised concerns, recent updates confirm that Odin has power and has reached deep space. However, its attitude control remains uncertain, and recovery efforts are ongoing. The third payload, Epic Aerospace's Chimera, an orbit transfer vehicle weighing 300 kilograms, appears to be functioning nominally. Chimera is designed to move payloads between orbits, including translunar injections for future missions. For this launch, Chimera is carrying an unidentified CubeSat manifested by ExoLaunch. Overall, by delivering critical scientific payloads and testing new technologies, Ithe-9 future CLIPS missions will contribute to NASA's broader goal of establishing a sustainable human presence on the Moon as part of the Artemis program. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.